Hello everyone, thank you for coming back to yet another episode of The Gloving Paradigm. I am your host, Peter, aka OPD Dubuque, and this week is going to be a very fun week for me because I get to cover a subject matter that I don't think people really take in consideration sometimes. Uh, I would say mostly some of the newer people or the newcomers, people who have been doing this within probably two years, I would say, don't really take this into account and I can totally understand why because there's so many things when it comes to gloving that you have to take into consideration and the things that you have to do in order for you to really get yourself really into the craft. Now, yes, we all know that concepts and movesets and all this stuff, your technique, your flow, your musicality, your showmanship, the four pillars of gloving and all that stuff is extremely important. But another thing I keep telling people that it's extremely important that people don't really want to say it's important, but it is is your, your colors and your, your selections and your, your configurations when it comes to your colors. So what this episode is going to pretty much be about is more of a, not necessarily in depth, but just kind of a, a lesson of understanding when it comes to color selection and color theory within gloving, or at least what I was able to learn from my experience as being a glover of 10 years and learn about color sets and color configurations within the gloving community and a lot of popular trends that people have done throughout the years. This is going to be one of those episodes where I don't know how people are going to feel. And I really, really hope this is going to work out because, oh, hey, that's the community thing. So we're going to get into some color theory here. And one of the things I want to cover, well, the, the main thing I want to cover actually is accent colors. So what is it when I'm talking about accent colors? If you have spent any cursory amount of time watching anything from HGTV when it comes to home improvement projects and housing projects and home makeovers and things of that nature, you will see that they have these things called accent colors and rooms where three walls of a four wall room will be one color as the fourth wall will be a different color. That is the accent wall, that is the accent color. That's the idea I'm gonna go with here for this this week. Now, you may sit here and think, oh, we shouldn't have to you know, put that into consideration or that shouldn't be really a thing that we should worry ourselves over. It's not something you need to worry yourself over. It's more of just an idea that you can take into your consideration of your, your configurations with your lights and you know maybe just trying something things out trying to make things look a little just a, a little different from everybody else and you, you know kind of stick out of the crowd it's just one of those three days later you, you guys kind of see where i'm going with this basically when it comes to accent colors and the whole idea that i'm trying to convey here when it comes to this particular subject matter is that taking things in consideration like that could make you actually stand out in the gloving crowd mostly just because there's so many there's so many trends that a lot of us follow that could kind of homogenize what it looks like in our gloving community so i know i know people are gonna think i'm crazy when i say that but hear, hear me out You're not my dad. all right so what is basically an accent color especially in the context of gloving is basically a color or subset of colors that either stand out or bolster the overall color palette of your glove set. Now, you a few ways that people have gone about it is if you have like a softer color base, you have a much more bombastic, stronger, bolder color. So if you have a lot of creams and you know very light, frilly colors, you know pastel-esque level stuff, maybe even lighter than that. You know you would want some very bombastic, solid colors. So let's just say you're using a lot of peaches and creams and whites and and blushes and pinks. Maybe you toss in a couple of reds in there on a couple of your fingers. Holy crap, there's their accent color. Red becomes this one particular color that is not very prevalent within the color set, but it's there and it's so out of place in terms of the rest of the color scheme that it stands out. That is essentially the accent color. Now, what this actually provides is this very interesting effect, at least in my opinion. It's something that I've observe over the years and when I've heard from people because I like trying out accent colors just because accent colors just have a subtlety to them that actually have a bigger impact than what most people realize. Okay, so 
you know, you have various examples of like having a softer color base. You might want a more bolder, you know, saturated, contrasted color to stand out. Or you can actually have a subset of colors that are close to the alignment of the colors that you're using, just a little bit more that it actually just kind of bolters and complements the other colors, making them stand out even more and making them, you know, actually complement each other and make them stand out equally. That's another example of accent coloring that I'm trying to convey here. You know, if you have stronger color base, maybe you want to go with a cooler color as your accent. If you have, you know, a cooler color base, maybe you want some, you can go with a soft color or you can go with a harder color, you know. It's one of these things that you can do these trade-offs. Now, that's something you definitely want to keep in mind that not all accent colors are going to work and it's one of those trial and error things I do stress to a lot of people for a very specific reason because what they do, you know, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things I try to make people understand. I don't give a f Keisha. But one of the questions I know most people are going to ask is why should we use this and it's it's these small little these small little decisions that people can make that can really I wouldn't necessarily make or break a light show but essentially it can make or break a light show uh, I'm not saying that it's like it's the end all be all type deal I'm just saying that even one little thing out of place on in terms of a color configuration maybe a flash pattern configuration you know your move set whatever the case may be it can be made better by your color set and flash pattern choices or it can make worse by your color set and flash pattern choices that's why i'm trying to kind of help you guys understand when it comes to this so why we should use this in the visual component side of things it helps you make you stand out and grabs the attention of your viewer of course, you know, it's one of those things that our eyes like to do is that once we see things, we kind of filter out information, okay? Once we have the information that we need that we don't find necessarily useful, uh, we tend to kind of like block it out. And that's what accent colors do, is they make themselves stand out and grab the attention of your viewer to make them go, hey, you need to be paying attention to what's going on here because something interesting is happening here. That's the idea that I have when it comes to accent colors. Okay, and it does help balance out your color palette in some fashion or another. You know, it's a way to kind of like anchor your color palette if you need to, or it's a way to fortify it and build it up in a you know a higher you know a higher standard than it was before before the accent colors come in. And of course, one of the things, and I hate to do this because I know people are gonna be like, "Oh my God, I can't believe he actually said that." Oh. You. But it's essentially to accentuate your color palette. And yes, I know, to say accent colors accentuate colors is rather redundant. I get it. Trust me, I get it. I don't I don't like it either, but that's the, that's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> Happy fun times. Anyways, so we have these things, and one of the things I also want to say when it comes to this subtlety component of accent colors is that the small things that can make such a huge difference and makes it show on its own, you know, again, I, I got in plenty of shows where people didn't really have a whole huge, you know, move palette, you know, a repertoire of moves to use from. You know, I wouldn't say they're absolutely basic, but they had a lot of foundational fundamental moves and concepts and things like that however their show was much more memorable to me is because they had very interesting configurations with their color sets and their flash patterns especially the ones that i remember the most are the ones that actually had accent colors put into them and the main reason is is because those accent colors stood out to me therefore i actually had a lovely conversation with these people and how they actually went about choosing these accent colors and why they went the way they did it's one of those things i really like about loving in its nature is that it can allow these conversations to happen that most people don't realize are actually very meaningful conversations at least to people like myself who is a devoted glover to the craft you know that's just that's just me i don't know how about you phil but that's just how i feel why are we still here just to suffer so Another thing I definitely want to say is this allows for more immersion within your show. As much as people think that that's not going to do it, your your color selections and using accent colors is actually another way to immerse your viewer into your show even more. 
it's it's weird to sit and think of it in like a marketing product placement subliminal messaging ploy idea but I'm going to kind of go that route to make you understand where I'm going with now I'm not saying that you are subliminally messaging your your viewer to like go buy some products or whatever or tell them to go buy whatever product that you're using to get off your light show or what all no that is your conversation of like where you get your lights and this is the website you go to blah 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 now the immersion factor when it comes to these acts with accent colors is that it allows your viewers to take note of something that allows them to look deeper within the piece of art than what is actually there. Therefore, creating the magic of art. At least that's how I look at it. That's just how I am. But now you can't spell nutrition without nut. Anyways. It's one of the things I say, it also really does lend to your moveset if you utilize it properly. So, a lot of people who have listened to my show from time to time know that I like to mix up flashing patterns. I also like mixing up color palettes, but that's just me. But people do know that I like to use different flashing patterns on different fingers to accentuate within the movesets I have because the subtle changes actually add layers to your show. And accent colors can do the same thing. That's the funny thing is, is that people don't really sit there and think that your colors really do uh, matter at all on how they're placed. No, it really does matter and taking that into consideration is going to make it much, much more rewarding for you as a Glover. It's one of those things I always tell people is that half of your movesets and half the battle when it comes to gloving is your movesets and your, your, your repertoire of palettes of, of concepts. The other half is your equipment. Okay, your gloves, your lights, your batteries, your diffusers, all that stuff. That's the other half of your gloving show thing that you must take into consideration. And I get it when it comes to a lot of people where it's just like, I don't have the time to sit there and think about what colors that I want to choose. That's not a problem. Do you know the way? We have this thing called color swap, mode swap groups. Okay, whatever chip you have, you can go to a group that is of that respective chip and get color combinations from people. <coughs> That's one of the things I definitely want to stress is that we do have resources available for these things. You know, for kind of loud, WWG Discord chat has a color swap section where you can go and trade colors with other people. That's the thing that you need to understand. So getting that out of the way and kind of getting back on track here is that one of the things I will definitely say that when it comes to your accent colors is that it can also be magnified even further if you also take in consideration changing the flash patterns. Now, when it comes to accent colors, the accent color does not need to be on all of the fingers. In my opinion, and in my experience, what works the best is that you either put the accent colors either on the ends, aka your pinky and thumbs, or you can put the accent color on your middle finger. Now you can also do it on your index and ring. I've seen people do that as well. These are the ones that I like the most are the ends or the middle. That's just how I am. I don't care that you broke your elbow. It's something I always will encourage to a lot of newcomers and to any Glover who will want to play around with their color configurations to try things out. But the main important things when it comes to an accent color is that it's an accent color. Therefore, it cannot be as prevalent within your color set to be considered an accent color because again accent colors are subtly touching the color palette to accentuate its overall palette now again you guys have heard me say it before i'm not going to say it again but that is pretty much the idea that you need to be taking into consideration but that is the only way that an accent color is going to work is that you don't flood your palette with that color you got to just pepper it a little bit with that color okay it's free real estate that's the idea that you need to take into consideration. Now, when it comes to ideas for accent colors, you know, there's three main ones that I always talk about is, you know, you have contrasting colors. Not to confuse contrast with clash, just saying that right now. Contrast is literally like how red and blue are contrasting colors in the context of light. And it's also scientifically shown that they're the contrasting points because blue is the shortest wavelength in the light spectrum, visible light spectrum, and red is the longest wavelength of the visible light spectrum. So that's the idea when it comes to contrast. Now, 
when you come to accenting and contrasting colors is that you got to be the base color of your color set is what you're going to need to contrast with your accent color. Say what? Okay, so if it's like predominantly a red color, in, especially in your tint. Basically, if you're wondering what is your base color, look at your tint or just look at your idle uh, setup. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, wait, how does that make any sense? The idle pretty much is where it's just sitting still and whatever the overall color that get, your light gives off when it's sitting idle on that mode, it's kind of like your base color. Now I understand when you move the lights around, the colors kind of change and your palette kind of changes. To me, it's whatever is the strongest color that you know kind of just feels like the foundation of it all so if you have like a lot of purples or a lot of blues things like that you know that's your your base you know then you want to contrast that you know so if you have a lot of blues throw in a red that red's gonna pop out really really hard you can even throw in a yellow and it'll still pop out really hard things like that you know you have things that are contrasting now you also have things kind of like complementary colors so like I said, you know, blue and yellow are kind of complementary to each other. They kind of complement each other in terms of what you, in visual design. Uh, red and green is another very good example of complementary colors. I know when it comes to light, it kind of gives off that Christmas vibe, but I'm just saying it's one of those things that people take into consideration is that they actually kind of do complement each other and bolster each other up. You know, uh, that's one of the things I definitely want to say. So if you have, again, another cooler set and you want something to complement that, you might want to go with a lighter. That, but you can still be in the same color scheme of where it is. So like if you have a lot of dark blues, throwing in a really light blue, or maybe even a light green would actually something be pop out a lot more. Now, one of the things I definitely want to ex express here is when it comes to clashing colors, it's definitely ones that, you know, cause the viewer to be jarred a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with this idea of actually having colors that's kind of clash. Uh, is a visual aesthetic that people can utilize to really accentuate their show in some fashion. Now, I, I will certainly say that if you are somebody who's doing some choreography and some storytelling, clashing colors can actually, you know, fortify a certain part of your show. You know, it could be a point of high tension, things of that nature when it comes to your storytelling or your, even your showmanship. It's one of the things I just don't want to sit here and say clashing colors is bad and you should never do it because it doesn't work. No, clashing colors can work. You just got to figure out how to make it work. Okay, and that's one of those things why I always talk about trial and error. Again, everybody should know from the famous quote a drill sergeant taught me, blunt force trauma repetition gets it right every time. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. But one of the final things I definitely want to touch on are ideas of like color bases. So... You know, you can have a dark color basis, a lot of dark blues and purples and dark greens and dark reds, things like that, where it's rather dark in its tone. And you can complement that with pretty much a lot of light colors, a lot of soft colors. You can also, you know, maybe use some pastels. It will also stick out as an accent color. Again, got to be very careful about which colors you're mixing together. And, you know, if you have any idea of how colors work in terms of, you know, interior design or art in general i did a good episode on the intro to color theory by the way you'll understand where i'm coming from when it comes to these things that you know you can either complement it you can either clash with it or you can contrast with it you know so you have like you can go with a dark base a very light base which is you know a lot of your pinks a lot of your light yellows a lot of your light greens light blues things like that you know, you got your strong colors, which is your reds, your yellows, your blues, your greens, you know, they're good solid colors, the traditional colors, if you want to go with that. Got a lot of your soft colors, which again, you know, most of your pastels, and of course bombastic colors, which kind of goes into the strong solid colors that you can choose from. You know, you have various different ways, and it's, I would certainly say this is more like an introductory idea when it comes to accent colors. But basically, when it comes to accent colors, it, the goal is is to just pepper into your color palette just a little bit of this particular color and watch it literally unfold in front of your viewers and watch how they will notice that there's a particular color that's not very prevalent, but it's there enough to stand out. And that allows for more of the immersion with your viewer. Wow! That was sh but yes, that is pretty much all for my episode. Holy crap, I don't know why it goes on for like 20 minutes when I talk about this stuff. But here we are, 20 minutes into this episode and we're still talking about it. But 
I would like to thank everybody who has made it this far in the episode. I highly, highly appreciate that you guys take the time out of your day to listen to what I have to say. I try to be as educational as possible when it comes to gloving because I just want people to get into this craft and enjoy the craft for what it is. With that being said, if you have any questions that I do not cover in this episode, you do have the various, various social media outlets you can hit me up in. Wait a minute! Who are you? I do have a Facebook page, I do have an Instagram, I am also on YouTube, and of course I am also on Reddit. These are various places you can find me on. Okay, I'm also on Anchor if you guys don't know, but I'm also being spread all over the place. I'm on Apple, I'm on Google, I'm on Pocket Cast, I'm on Radio Pocket, you know, all that, all these major, major podcast websites I am on. If you listen to Spotify, you will find me on Spotify. Like, I'm in all these various places. Oh, good for you! But yes, you will find all the various social media links down below in this episode's description. You know, my Facebook, Instagram, my YouTube. All that stuff, you'll find it in there. Another thing I'll definitely say is I also have a Discord that you can hit me up on. I have my own private Discord. And, of course, you can also find me on WWG Discord chat as well. I'm always on there anyways. But another thing I will definitely want to say is that if you like the content that I create and you wish to help support me and help me make better quality content, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. Ain't nobody got time for that! Yes. I do have a Patreon, and yes, I'm going to be keep pushing on this because we're kind of allowed people when it comes to content creation, it does cost money. And I want to make better content for you guys. So, if you really want to help me out here, please do consider donating to me on Patreon. A little as $1 a month goes a very, very long way in getting me closer to my first goal, which is $1,000 a month where I can do this full time and not have to worry about supporting this with a day job. Okay, so you have those places to hit me up at. Do not hesitate to ask me any questions. I am always willing to have a conversation and at least help people understand and work more on their craft because that is what my goal is, is just to help people with gloving. So thank you so much for listening. I do appreciate all your guys' support. If it wasn't for you guys, this show wouldn't have gone as long as it did. So thank you so much. I absolutely love you guys. But I am your host, Peter, a.k.a. LPD8 Dubuque, and I'll see you guys all next week.